Okay, I'm gonna start this. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place due to the outbreak of the coronavirus 2019. This meeting of the town of Berlin Board of Selectmen will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The town of Berlin will use best efforts to post an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the town's webpage, the town's YouTube channel. Approved minutes will be posted to mytowngovernment.org. For this meeting, the members of the public who wish to attend the virtual meeting may attend via the Zoom webinar platform in one of two ways, one with both audio and video access or by telephone audio only. Should any member of the board have te technical difficulties and or lose access to the meeting, the meeting will recess for a period of time to see whether access can be restored. If not, the meeting will be continued to another date agreed to by a majority of the board or adjourned until our next scheduled meeting. Uh, we call the meeting to order at 7.03. Meetings of the Board of Selectmen are generally recorded for transmission on both Berlin Cable Television Access Channel and YouTube. Your voice, image, and or telephone number may be recorded. Uh, we have approval of the May 18th, 2020 meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Second in. Okay, we'll take a vote. Keith, aye. Vaisaki, aye. Stone I. Okay, thank you. Um, Margaret, we have some correspondence. Yes, the town received um, some correspondence today that pertains to the virtual community outreach uh, meeting. Um, and uh, did you want to read the correspondence or do you want me to touch on some um, some notes I made on the correspondence. How would you like me to, to I know the board hasn't had a chance to look at it yet, but. Can you uh, just give a brief synopsis? Sure. So, um, all right. First, um, um, I want to, um, I want to note that the, this proponent um, had originally scheduled an in-person community outreach meeting for March 10th. Um, and had actually reserved space at the 1870 Town Hall, but the notice timeline was deficient and the meeting wasn't rescheduled um, due to the COVID-19 shutdown. Uh, the, the meeting that they had scheduled was actually on the same day the governor declared the public health emergency. Um, on, another, um, on another point, the community outreach meeting is the sole responsibility of the applicant. Um, they must put together the plan. The board only approves the mechanism um, for the applicant holding the community outreach meeting based on CCC guidance. The community outreach meeting doesn't contractually bind the town in any way. Rather, it is one of the prerequisites for state licensure. Um, and to, to address the point of in-person meetings um, as opposed to virtual community outreach meetings, at an in-person meeting, attendees would hear questions and answers, and they'd have the ability to ask their own questions. The virtual plat platform will allow the same, whether uh, people call in by telephone or access the meeting by computer. The meeting will be interactive and will be moderated actually by me, um, on behalf of the town to assure that all questions asked before and during the meeting are answered. Um, and to another point, um, regarding people that may have some difficulty with uh, computer access, um, the town, the board, has required the applicant to provide a toll-free number that people can call into for the meeting. They've also required that the meeting accommodate up to 500 attendees. 
equal access is going to consist of assuring that all attendees um, have an opportunity to ask questions. So in true round robin style, no one, no one person is going to be able to monopolize uh, the line of questioning um, and so that everyone has an opportunity to ask questions. The applicant will answer all questions submitted in advance at the meeting. So at the start of the meeting, when the question and answer period begins, after the applicant has gone through the presentation and instructions for how to participate in the meeting, um, the first, the first um, questions that will be answered will be those that were submitted in advance. The meeting is also going to be taped for rebroadcast on Berlin Cable Access, and it will be archivable. Additionally, an automatic audio transcript is going to be generated from the meeting and for a week following the meeting, the, um, the applicant is going to take follow up questions and will be answering those questions. That's a, a week following the meeting. And then finally, on the last point, the chat function um, will be available for attendees who are accessing the meeting from their computer um, and instructions will be provided for that. And then there'll be a raise hand functions for those who are calling in, whether or not on a toll free line and instructions will be provided for that. So I just wanted to touch on those um, those area of areas of concern that were addressed um, in the letter that the board received today. Again, you may not have seen the letter, but I wanted to touch on those things um, to try to assure uh, residents that if the board does vote to proceed with the community outreach meeting, the virtual meeting, um, that the town has put in place several measures to assure participation. Um, I would add that the applicant has also agreed to continue the meeting until all the questions have been answered. Good point, yes. Yes. There, there is no end time for the meeting, so questions can be asked until there are no more questions. Yep. Okay, thank you. And, um, um, thank you for uh, addressing the correspondence, Margaret. Sure. Um, the, the, there are no other correspondence, correct? Uh, there are, there's no other correspondence that I have. Okay. Um, then we'll move on to general public comment. Um, I don't see any hands. No. I hate to be stupid, but is this to open what? <laughs> this is this is for the uh, virtual meeting that is required by um, the applicant who would like to open a retail marijuana store in um, Berlin. Where in Berlin? 64 <laughs> Banner Road. Huh. On the Marlboro border. <coughs> It's behind the DCU, Chris. Uh, so, so past the DCU, it's your first left. Take that road that has the parking garage. Go all the way down. Yeah, we only like things on the edges of town. Well, it's on the edge. It's right by 290 and 495. Okay. It's the old banner door, and I believe some landscaper occupies a certain part of the building. Yeah. It's pretty tucked away. Yep. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to move on to hearings, appointments, and presentations. Um, and we have a joint... Uh, and can I just interrupt? There is a hand yeah. raised. Ornella Quinn has her hand raised in the audience if you'd like to hear from her. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Go ahead, Ornella. Your microphone's open. Okay. Uh, hold on. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Um, hey, I really appreciate um, addressing uh, all my concerns in the letter, and um, I'm really happy to hear about um, the um, the interactive uh, participation of of the residents that will be able to do that at the meeting. So that's great. There, there was just one one question that I really um, didn't have answered. I'm just wondering um, if you've if you have weighed the pros and cons of waiting until we can do an in-person meeting. And I'm just run, wondering what the, what the rush is for this. And, and, you know, given this isn't an essential or an urgent um, 
you know, business, why we couldn't wait until a time where uh, residents could actually attend safely in person. I'm wondering yeah. what the reasoning was behind that. Um, I, I can try to address that. Thanks. Um, <laughs> it's, this could very well be our new normal at this point. And we don't know how long um, this is gonna go on. Um, you know, they're talking about not even starting school possibly in the fall. Um, so uh, I, that, that would be my response. Um, you know, Margaret and I have worked really hard to negotiate all the things that we think that the town um, needs to have to have this virtual meeting and, um, uh, and yes. we'll continue after that also as far as, you know, after the virtual meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's what that's my response. Gotcha. Okay, I, I can appreciate that. I mean, I might not agree, but I do appreciate mm -hmm. all the work that's gone in to ensure some of these. Um, so as far as when I look at the CCC guidelines, um, really, there's only a minimum of or a, uh, at least seven days uh, notice for this. Um, I didn't even know about the one and in, 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 that was scheduled for March 10th. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just um, wondering how much notice, if that's in the requirements, you, you required the applicant to give for this meeting? Mm -hmm. um, Margaret uh, or Mary, I, I know that it's going into the, the Clinton item. Yep. Um, go ahead. The length of notice is in accordance with CCC's regulations, CCC's guidelines. So we are, the town is following that requirement. Um, as far as who the notice will go to, um, the, uh, Chris, yeah, Chris is, um, Chris is right. Um, it's going to be published in the Clinton item. Um, it is going to be circulated to all abutters according to the CCC's regulations. It's going to go to the town clerk, the board of selectmen, and the planning board according to CCC's regulations. It's also going to be going to the administration at the Berlin Boylston Regional School District district and the Assabet um, uh, Regional Technical School. Um, and um, the notice itself, because this is a virtual meeting, um, we did require in the notice, we're requiring in the notice that not only the website be provided where the Zoom access information will be, but the Zoom access information itself be on the notice. Okay. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I appreciate that. And, you know, the CCC really, their guidelines are really a, a minimal um, requirement. So the seven days concerns me a little bit um, as far as it being posted in the uh, Clinton item. You know, these days, a lot of people let their mail sit before they mm -hmm. open it up. Mm -hmm. So my concern is if that it goes in, you know, they get it on a Friday and they let it sit for a number of days before they open it up and look at it. It could be that, um, you know, they may not actually see that notice. And I think something of this importance could, um, could probably warrant a little more than seven days. Could we, mm -hmm. could we change that to two weeks? We're, um, we're counting on um, social media also, correct? We're gonna be putting it on the website and social media as well. And, and the board could certainly consider that, but again, um, CCC's, um, CCC provide, provided the guidelines in this case where the board um, is using the seven days. Yeah, and again, I appreciate that, but I think that- And that's, yeah, that's with or without the virtual, meet. that's an in-person or virtual. Yeah, meeting. I know, yeah, okay. it, it feels very short to me. Um, and I just think it's our responsibility to look out for the best interest of our town, not the CCC, but but us and, and the select board. So, um, that's why I'm, I'm asking if, if you could consider, um, I mean, it, it's, we're looking out for the best interest of the town, not the, not the applicant, correct? Yeah. So I think that giving him, you know, asking him to give us a, a little more notice um, could be warranted in this case. So hopefully that's something that, you know, you can consider as a board and see that it would, it would work to the town's best interest if we did that. So the board will be discussing the notice later this evening. Okay. All right, I appreciate that. And um, great, I'm glad to hear that it's going to be posted on the website. I thought it was just going to be in the paper. And um, all right, 
All right. Thanks. Well, thank you for addressing those questions. Thanks, Ornella. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, we have a joint meeting with the Board of Health, the Town Moderator, Police Chief, and Fire Chief concerning the annual town meeting, which is scheduled for Monday, June 22nd at 7.30 p.m. Um, has everybody, is everybody there? I don't see Tom. Are the chiefs um, in the audience? Or are they attending? I, I don't see either chief, but I don't know who 440 is 417 and I can't chat with them. Do you want me to bump it up for a minute or? Well, let me, yeah, let me. I just texted Chief Galvin. Oh, we got a hand raised by Janet Lammy. Okay. You are you, well, are you still on public comment, Chris? I can be. <laughs> Janet, there you are. Go ahead, Janet. Okay, I, I, I'm coming into this late, but normally I can see, and I'm not trying to, I, I'm wondering if it's my computer. Normally you can see like the select board and now we're only seeing whoever the speaker is. Is that a oh. new mode you're in? No. You have a choice of views. You can look at speaker view or gallery view. No, there's no option for gallery view tonight. I, that's why I'm. That's why I'm just checking. So I'll, I'll see. I don't have that option on this Zoom meeting. Is anybody else having the same problem, or is it just me? Did have you? Have I see you, everybody to the right of all the. Yeah, to the, right of the top right corner. Are you maybe in full screen? Uh, no. Until I got invited in is the only way I can see gallery view. So see if see if. Um, See if when you take me off, it goes away and I'll text Mary around. We see you now. I don't want to be seen. I just wanted to see everybody else. So thank you. Just a question. Okay, and Chief Galvin says he's restarting his router. He's having a connection issue. But as soon as he jumps in, I'll, I'll connect him. Okay. You can, you got to take Barry off of mute. He can or do that. Can he? I muted myself. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, we have, we have two hands raised now in the gallery, Michael Ginsburg and William Trump. William Trump is with NRP. All right. Um, oh, does, there's the chief. Does Michael have a question? Apparently, with his hand raised, let me. Hey, for a second. I made it. <laughs> yeah. So, here comes Michael. Michael. Hold on a second. He's on mute. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, oh, I, I'm muted. You are unmuted now. Okay, thank you. No, I was I was just going to say that I had agreed with Janet that I could only I could not get to a gallery view but uh the host asked me to restart my video it says whoop start my video sorry and um now now for some reason i have suddenly gallery view okay so now you can ignore me maybe because it's a what well, i don't know it's i don't know it's the same meeting i've yeah. used credentials i've used before so I'm, there's glitches as Brittany and i have noticed yeah. there's oddities hopefully it all yeah, yeah, a couple of meetings now. I've had problems getting in. I thought, I thought it was on my end. I went and restarted my router and stuff, but finally made it. So is there a question from Mr. Trump? Um, do you want me to put Michael back in the gallery? Uh, it doesn't matter. Mike, you want to stay? All right, hold on, please. We like your animals behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my camels, yes. <clears throat> Mr. Trump, your microphone is open and you can start your video. I just wanted to let you know that the 440-417 number is mine. Aha, mystery solved. So I'm going to join back on my phone. 
Okay, thank you. Okay. Is everybody, is the fire chief here too? The fire chief um, is bar borrowing his, borrowing, borrowing a computer to get on. So I think he might be in, in process of getting on. Okay. And I don't see any, any other hands from the audience. I can't okay. tell who the Mary is, but it might be Mary McKilk. All right, so we've got an audience. We've got the panel here to discuss the next uh, agenda item. Um, yes. Through the chair, would you? I, I think we were um, basically had this on the agenda to talk about the concerns for public health issues um, and discuss restrictions and safety advisories. Um, I don't know um, if someone wants to start uh, as far as concerns or if we can um, move forward with putting together safety advisories um, for the town meeting on June 22nd. Um, we were considering uh, an outside venue, I believe, am I correct? Lisa and Peg? Yes. Okay. Um, do we want to start with the chief? I'm Galvin. Um, okay, I guess. Do you, do you, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess this is kind of a, a public health issue. I mean, I'm here to give my opinion and my advice, but uh, I don't know if we should start with the the Board of Health and, and go from there. Um, we can. You know, Mar can. Mar I was going to say, Margaret and I have definitely talked about this quite a bit over the last week and explored some options to just try and stay cost effective. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, you know, from a, from a policing end, a, a lot of it, what we would be looking at with an outside venue is meeting security and what we would do to make sure that, you know, people are checking in, that we just don't have people coming from all directions. Um, something I think we can handle very easily. Um, you know, I think we worked with Eloise on how we kind of planned the election to work through the building. I think we could do a similar thing with an outdoor town meeting with, with indoor check-in and people pass through the building to get to the outdoor area. You know, we have police and fire, um, like safety line tape that we could mark off an area. Um, I think it's a very uh, attainable option if it's something that, uh, that we want to try. Um, you know, it's, you know, obviously we're at the whim of the weather, um, tent options that we did look into were very, very expensive, um, even for a short term rental. So, um, you know, we have, uh, emergency lighting. We have a lighting trailer. We could borrow another one from another municipality to ensure that we have enough lighting should it start to get dark. Um, so I, I think, you know, we, it's a very viable option. And it's something that, you know, on a public safety end, we can definitely attain. Uh, from the Board of Health perspective, I guess I would like the cliff note version of discussions relative to having it outdoors, where, um, and just procedurally, uh, I haven't been part of this, nobody's fault, I just want to make sure I'm on the same page in terms of commenting, in terms of what this particular approach would involve. Well, Margaret, do you want to go over the guidelines as far as outdoor? Well, the guidelines, I think I circulated the guidelines to everyone um, in on this meeting. Um, the Berkshire County Boards of Health Association actually put out really good uh, guidelines uh, for the various options for town meeting, indoor, outdoor, and delayed. So there are kind of three different options. With regard to the outdoor meeting option, Assuming that it's going, it would be held at Berlin Memorial School where the town meeting has been posted, you've got the South Commons or the entire parking area. For ADA reasons, we would have to have some of the seating, at least some of the seating in the paved area to accommodate um, uh, mo you know, mobility impaired uh, individuals. Um, there would have to be some organization, just like the chief said, whether people uh, go through the building first to get to the outdoor area or follow the driveway to the back of the building or what have you, there would have to be some organization and stations where people check in, 
maybe they're given um, a their little packet of town meeting materials. Um, we'd have to have sound systems set up. We do know that uh, Berlin Cable Access has sound systems, um, as do the schools. So the logistics, we'd have to uh, arrange logistically how to socially distance people in the outdoor area and or assure they're wear wearing masks. Okay. So I have a quick question too. Um, last year we were canceling everything outside due to mosquito borne diseases. Are we in that position again too? Or do we not know yet? Or I mean, it's, it's like we're getting hit from all sides. <laughs> Right. Uh, to, the be, to the best of my knowledge, it's uh, early in the season and that's not at risk. That's something I would confirm with mosquito control. Um, the next couple really warm days may change that and then we're going back into a cooling cycle. Um, so we need to touch bases with people who are more authoritative on, on how all that works. Um, certainly something to to think about and address, no question. And that's how we could coordinate with mosquito control possibly to do okay. some spraying the day or two spraying, before as well. Absolutely. Yep. I'm sure they would be cooperative. Would this be bring your own chair or bring your own blanket? Um there are chairs. Um, there are chairs at the school. Um, once they're handled, they'd have to be disinfected or people could bring their own chairs, sit in front of their vehicles, uh, you know, however, however it's going to work to assure social distancing. I, we had talked earlier about that drive-in movie style. Now, Barry is sitting in and I know that he has, he has thoughts on this, so uh, we could let him weigh in. But, but Sue, Please. those are details I think that we could kind of run through once we have a direction. Okay. Hey, Barry. I'm pretty concerned about an outdoor meeting because of all the equipment and things you've got to put produce for it. And then if it rains, you can't use it anyway. Um, I think that the gym at least is a large space with a huge amount of air above everybody and around everybody. There's, large, there's sizable doors that could be opened if the if the air is appropriate and the bug situation is appropriate. Uh, there's also a, a, a good system for uh, moving a lot of air in that room as well. So I've looked at the, I've looked at the, uh, Margaret and I have talked a little about measurements of the rooms and I, we can put about 70 people, 70 to 75 people in the gym with good isolation, good seven to eight feet between us, uh, well, say se six and a half to seven feet between everybody. And, um, and then we can put maybe another 20 in the cafeteria. And there are additional rooms in the building. Uh, that building has a, a video system, which we have had hooked up in the past so that uh, virtually any of the rooms in the building could be added to a network to uh, uh, actually use them for, for people to observe and be able to hear the meeting. Um, in a lot of ways, I just think it would be a lot easier to control inside. I'm also of the view, and I intend to say this publicly, that while normally I want to encourage everybody to go to town meeting and participate, this may just be the year to read the warrant and think about everything that's there and decide whether you could satisfy yourself to stay home and watch it on TV. You wouldn't be able to vote, but you could be aware of what everything that's doing. And uh, but you've got to be comfortable with the fact that you know all the business is there. And if you're comfortable with the idea that much or all of it is likely to be passed, then you could conceive conceivably decide to stay home and protect yourself from uh, outside uh, germs and stuff. And also. Um, uh, be informed, but not unfortunately not there to vote. If we could keep the amount of people that came to a number that will fit in the gym, as I say, 70, 75 people, that would really be great. And um, I don't think that's impossible. We've been having town meetings of about 150, 160 for the annual most of the time in late years, and uh, unless there was some big controversial issue. And I'm, I'm, 
we've made an effort in preparing the warrant not to have much in the way of greatly controversial issues on it. So I'm hopeful that that's, uh, you know, that, that, that's kind of the route that we could go. If you want to go outdoors, that's fine, but I'm a little bit concerned about the idea of um, uh, go on the drive-in movie route because that is going to be a really tough thing if we have to do a recorded vote. I have I have two questions. Excuse me, Barry. Uh, yeah. I assume you were done. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the issues on the warrant are predominantly budgetary. Is that correct? Yeah. So we're not getting into uh, bylaws or anything along those lines. The only bylaws that are on there are the ones from last year that we want to, if we can, revote them so that we can get them through the Attorney General's office because of the problem we have with last year's notification. My the potential concern is with a limited participation. Are we faced with any prob problematic, yeah, problematic voting blocks? Um, taking control. My second question is in your calculation of uh, ability for attendance, is that with the uh, uh, bleachers down or up? Because it seems to me if the bleachers were down, there, there's room for more people, but I'm just, that's a speculation on my part. Yes. Uh, we could put more in with the bleachers open. Um, okay. I just did that as a quick thing with chairs. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we could have the bleachers open. We could put stickers on them or something saying this is where you can sit. Right. Right. Uh, uh, I think it's I think it's important even if we're outside that we want to we want the chairs set up ahead of time so that we provide the appropriate social distancing in the structure in, in which we do it. Any, and this is, this is probably an impossible question, um, any consideration for couples who might attend and their chairs could be next to each other? Yeah, we would have, uh, my plan is that we would have at least some cases where we'd have pairs of chairs together that people could use. Now, you never can predict how many no, one, one and one would do the other, but right. we're, we would try to accommodate that, and that, in fact, helps us get a few more people in. Right, right. I guess uh, <clears throat> not not necessarily from a Board of Health standpoint, but I'm a little concerned about the outdoor venue, uh, especially dealing with Mother Nature. I mean, that can really put a serious wrench in the works um, that could easily um, compare or be worse than what we're faced with by doing this inside. Yeah. And that's, I don't know if any of us have that answer. It's just something that we have to consider and make a judgment call on. Do we know what surrounding communities are doing at this point? <clears throat> there's, you want to there's, through the chair, there's a mix and they're all struggling with what they're going to do. Very few communities have, um, have their plans solidly in place. I think the majority of them are going with something outdoors. However, I do know that um, Bolton is doing something in the Neshoba um, in the Neshoba auditorium. I don't think they're going to be changing that. Uh, Hudson is in the middle of a debate about what to do about it. They can't seem to decide on it. Um, Boylston, I believe, is going to be moving theirs outdoors. Um, I'm not sure about any other towns in the area. I know Littleton was talking about moving it outdoors, um, and I know other towns are moving it outdoors. There's a mix, and I'll tell you, uh, frankly, there is, I was, on a, uh, I was on another web call today with state officials and there is so little guidance coming from the state. There is no unified guidance coming to the towns about their town meetings and everyone is being left to fend for themselves. So let's not forget that other option about delay. Uh, so that's just, you know, keeping that in the mix. That's another, that's another option that we are preparing for with the, um, the one month expenditure plan. 
Certainly, if we were to do it indoors, masks would be required. Um, the town can probably have some inventory available. At this point in time, I would hazard a guess that most individuals own at least one or two masks, but um, the town would be, I feel, obligated to make sure that we have a supply there for we anybody have, who showed up without one. We have purchased, we have purchased some um, okay. for town meeting and for town offices when they reopen. And um, even with the outdoor venue, uh, masks still could be advisable because, you know, John Smith is going to maybe park next to his neighbor and they're friendly and, you know, it, it's, it's, these are just really different times and, and we have to uh, address as many possibilities as we can think of. Yeah. And um, what phase would we be in for the, the governor's recommendations by the 22nd? I'm sorry, Lisa, say what, what phase would we be in for the governor's recommendations by the 22nd? Um, well, personally, I wouldn't be surprised if recommendations change. So yeah. uh, we're dealing with something of a moving target. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with what we know today. Um, I, I, my guess is if things go well, it would be what, phase two? If not, it, it would be I believe phase so, one. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So, but phase two uh, will not. Oh. We, we uh, do have a question from the audience. Um, Janet. Janet. Who's the question from? Janet. 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 Sue, Sue Regera also had her physical hand up. Oh, well, <laughs> I can wait. Um, I just want you all to know, I sat in in the State Board of Health meeting today. I go every, uh, well, it's usually Mondays and Fridays, but because of the holiday, it was today. I was there for graduation. I will tell you that um, as of now, and we may not be in phase two, and I don't know what's going to happen, but you cannot use a tent because a tent takes away from the law of, of, of it being an open space. So we, you can't use a tent if you're going to have an outdoor venue. Um, that was clearly explained. And they had some wonderful information on town meetings. But like I said, I was there for graduation, so I didn't. But there were a lot of these same questions being answered today. And you still have to wear a mask. You still have to be six feet apart. You're still going to have to do social distancing. Um, if you are in a building, you can only be at 25% occupancy. Um, they had all of this, all of this through the state. And it said to, if you had any questions to refer to your local board of health and they would have all the current information. And I'm not talking Paul and Bobby and Sue. I'm talking the Neshoba board of health who's doing our contract contact tracing and that group. Um, I, I was privy to some information that hasn't been printed and I don't want to speak out of turn um, because Paul is correct. It's changing by the moment and we should be in phase two by then. Only they keep saying if our counts continue to stay down or start to drop. And um, like I said, I was really there for graduation and um, the number 250, they said they were sticklers. So my question with that said and all, if we're inside or outside and somebody shows up and we go over our occupancy or over our, our numbers, is that legal to say to them, I'm sorry, you can't come in? I'm not sure you can do that. No, no, so, then, no. so my question is, then what are we going to do? What do we do with this meeting now? If you have over the number of people that you can allow, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to be rude or disrespectful. I'm just asking a question. I, my, my response to that question is, even with the bleachers down and spacing is, as Barry has calculated, uh, we, we might hit that 25%. I would also, from a very practical standpoint, 
be shocked if the state sent somebody to do accounts. Um, and if we were off by a couple, you know, the, this is a new normal. Um, I per that I'm question speaking personally, actually, yeah. no, let me finish. I'm speaking personally, not from the Board of Health, that we need to be as practical and safety orientated as possible. And I think that's an approach we're taking. My, my second question to that is, does a decision have to be made tonight that's or what I can it wait one week to see what the trends are, which might be uh, very helpful in indicators to us? Mm -hmm. I don't know that. I'm just throwing it out there for public consumption and consideration. Uh, and I think that's, that's exactly what it is, is um, information we all need to just somehow get together and have a chat. Mm -hmm. Whether we make a decision tonight or not is... Um, I think it would be a mistake to make a decision tonight. Uh, we have, some t have a little bit of time, not a lot, but I think it would be a mistake to make a decision tonight and see a sudden decrease or a sudden increase over the next week. And then what do we do? Well, and it looked from the news tonight, it looked as though there was um, some increases in several states. Correct, yeah. yes. They didn't even report at four o'clock. I was just going on to see what our number was today. It says zero, which we all know is, is because the data didn't get put in at four o'clock. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to make a decision tonight, but I do think we need to keep delaying um, on the table because it, it sounds like we may not be, be in the right place on the 22nd. That may be so. Yep. Uh, um, Chief, Chief, excuse me, Chief Clark, you, do you have any input from your sources of information? Um, you're a little bit more hands-on in, in terms of who's got what or who doesn't have what. I haven't seen any of the MEMA sit reps since uh, Saturday morning. That's the last one they sent. There'll be one okay. in the morning for today. Mm -hmm. It usually comes out at night for the, that preceding day. It comes out, like I think Janet said, some four or after they get all their information together and then they send it. Yeah. Uh, when you have a plan of action, I'll, I'll assist in any way that's needed to get whatever you want to get done. Along, and I know Chief Galvin's in too, listening to him talk earlier today. So it's like, uh, whatever you need done, we'll get it done like always. And it's like, uh, well, for the Board of Health and for the town, we appreciate both what uh, you and Tom are doing and have done. Uh, I, I will say publicly, it's been a, a, a very healthy assist to the Board of Health in these um, difficult times. But we need to move forward and try and have a town meeting. Yep. Whether it's the 22nd or whether it's delayed. Right. We determine. Is there anything else that anyone else would like to add before um, we, perhaps Peg and Lisa and I um, have, you know, there are regular meeting. meeting. Yes. What's that? I was going to say that from my observations in the last week, people seem to, you know, they feel safe at home and they seem to feel fairly safe outside. And from a lot of the conversations I've had with people. Is still has very hesitant about going into whether it's a store or a building mm -hmm. or whatever. So I think we might get a little bit more attendance outside versus inside. And that's just a very simple observation. Okay. Um, I have um, last late last week we got a twenty roughly twenty seven page. Uh, uh, communication from the Mass Moderators Association, a committee that had spent some time on a variety of these issues, inside, outside, and so on, and what the particular questions are that you need to get answers to, and you need to figure out what's the right way for you, for your, for your town. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, different towns are going to have different solutions. If you've got a nice uh, football field with uh, stands that you can mark out in the six foot spaces and all that and put a whole bunch of people in it and you've already got a sound system and lights and all those things it uh the outdoor meeting is a lot more practicable than it might be for us um 
the other thing I will say is that the school is not in regular operation. We can have a little time to set the thing up ahead of time. And as I said, with the, with the video system that's in the building, we should be able to use a lot, any number of rooms if necessary, if we really had a lot of people show up. And we also, uh, and I don't know, Margaret, whether it was with you or when I, I spent a few minutes on this subject with the, uh, with the uh, uh, fire marshal and the um, building inspector, and we were looking at chairs and distances between them and talked about some of that. But one, somebody said to me today, and then we, not, we might need to have one of our rooms that is for people who don't wear a mask. In other words, who can't wear a mask or have a reason why they don't wear a mask. And we would want to put the people that don't wear a mask somewhere away from all the people that are wearing them that, uh, you know, so that we don't have uh, more, more spread of, of, of a virus. I think um, you could mandate, though, that they had to wear a mask. Could you not, Paul? Board of Health can. No, they can't. If someone at ADA, you cannot force people to wear a mask if they have a medical condition oh, or. Okay, oh. but you'd have to have a medical condition. You, you, you have, but we can't ask. So if someone comes in with a mask and they claim there's a reason, you know, we can't ask them what their disability is. We can't ask them what the problem HIPAA, is. HIPAA we do right. have to make with HIPAA. We do have to make a reasonable accommodation. Right. The problem so with that would be is we can't have one room for no mask people because then we're putting people that may have a disability or, or, or uh, with yeah, other sure. people. So we, you know, we have to have separate spots for all of those people. Yes. Right. Right. And I don't think there would be a lot, but there could be some. I have a quick question for uh, Chief Clark. Uh, do we have access or do you know if we can get access? Uh, you know, I watch the news and I see Oh, airplanes being, I'll call, sterilized, they're being fumed or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do we have access to any equipment that would accommodate that? I'm just thinking in terms of uh, if the meeting goes forward inside the school, uh, dealing with chairs and so forth before, after. Um, I think we do. Uh, I believe, didn't we borrow something, Margaret, from uh, Berlin Boylston? Yes, the school has yeah. equipment, and we are also in the process of getting some equipment um, oh, okay. to, to hold us over in the future. Okay. Yeah, we, so, yeah, we, we can some... address that. That's good. Yeah, okay. We brought it a couple times in the school, but the other thing to think about is if school's not in session, there's right. no rest to clean up the chairs. Right. You know, right. So there's plenty it, of time to leave them. Safe it should be a safe venue to begin with, yes. Right. Yeah. So um, I guess if, if it's appropriate at this time, I would like to hear from Lisa and Peg, their feelings on this. I'll defer to Lisa first. Well, I think, I think we've all kind of come to consensus that we can't make a decision tonight. Um, I think a couple things to think about would be, you know, we don't, we're, we're a little concerned about even the spacing at outside at Berlin Memorial. So maybe it is time to look at, um, we can go off site. Um, you know, where is Boylston holding their meeting? Are they holding it at the school outside in the, in the field there? Do they have maybe more space that we could potentially take advantage of? Um, and then the other thing is, I, I think to me, it almost seems like we're looking at delays so we can get better better guidance or maybe the state comes out with something that says, you know, here's another way to do this. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think um, Boylston's holding their town meeting um, at the field at Tejanto. Which is bigger, uh, right? What's that? Which is quite a bit bigger. Yes, yes, I think so. Um, I mean, we, we have the opportunity, we've always had the opportunity to use um, to Hanto, um, either inside or outside, and the same, I believe, with Assabet. You know, mm -hmm. just have to not coincide with when um, perhaps Boylston's having their town meeting or uh, Assabet has a function. Um, Peg, do you want to weigh in or? Yeah, no, I had several concerns. I was busy taking notes while people were talking, and there were some items that um, hadn't come up. But what do we do in the case of a paper ballot? Uh, who's handing out the paper? Who's collecting the paper? 
everyone's always like, hey, got a pen, got a pen, got a pen. Um, so there's that concern. Uh, when people come up to talk at the mic, who's cleaning the mic afterwards? Because you know people are constantly, oh, I'm too short, I'm too tall. There's constantly this. You can't be in gloves because that's cross-contamination. I was going to bring some wipes. Yeah, well, well, you know, so then what? So you touch the top of the wipe, you know, with your hand. Now you've just contaminated that. Um, you know, what about the, the people who have pre-existing health conditions and they may be concerned about going into an enclosed building, regardless if the ceiling is high and the doors are open, you're basically excluding them from the meeting because they have concerns. They don't want to be around that number of people, whatever that number of people are. Um, you know, if we're going to look at multiple rooms, well, who's setting up these rooms? And then how are these rooms getting cleaned after they're set up? And then uh, I'm going to assume that there's going to be nurses there who will take temperatures of people coming in. Can we mandate that? Can we ask for that? And let's say that the meeting happens and a couple days later, uh-oh, all of a sudden people start feeling sick. Um, what do we do about testing for those people? Where's the responsibility lie with the town for what if could happen? So, um, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so where does that leave your opinion? <laughs> My opinion right now is that there's too many unknowns. Um, I don't think that we have enough information. I think, you know, going back to what Janet had commented on a little while ago that you really need somebody here from the Neshoba Board of Health who can walk through all the guidelines for us. I mean, right now we're just making assumptions based on what we hear from Governor Baker or assumptions from what we're reading online, but we're truly not hearing, and no knock on Sue or, or Paul, but we're truly not hearing from the Board of Health that needs to be guiding us on this. So if, um, you're going to ask me, I'm going to want to move towards a delay. Because honestly, um, I wouldn't feel comfortable sitting in that room for that. And plus, too, if you have people in multiple rooms and they have a question, how do you know they have a question? Is there going to be somebody going, hey, wait, I got a question. Somebody comes in from the calf. Somebody comes in from the other room. There would I, have to be a lot of orchestration. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, logistics. Absolutely a lot of yes. and and, uh, I'm wondering if at some point there's going to be something where whether we're going to be mailing out ballots or something, something is going to be put in place just because this isn't theoretically going away for quite some time and, and just, you know, making the town do its business in something that is indicated as, as a risky way doesn't really seem like a great way to go. No, I, I think right now there's too many unknowns. And honestly, even if we put a date on this, you know, to Paul's point, we don't need to decide tonight. So when are we going to decide a week from now? Are there still going to be unknowns? Of course there are. So um, if we were, if we had to make a decision tonight on this, would it be to have it inside or outside on the 22nd? You'd have to go and inside. No. I would say I would my, say outside, but I would outside. say outside too. Um, see how difficult this situation is. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We, we, so don't have, tough. we don't have the information to make a, no. a, a an informed decision. No, no I, but I think um, perhaps I know that um, Margaret has been and, and Chief Galvin and I don't know who else have been touching base with um, a lot of different people as far as where they could get um, a sound system and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. if we were to have it outside. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's, I think that was one of the reasons why we're having this discussion tonight is because if that was the way we were going to go, they needed to maybe follow up with some of those things. Just, uh -oh. a, just a quick comment based on somebody's comment about doing it at Tejanto. I don't see where they have more field space than what we have at South Commons. And I really, right. I, I, you know, I would be one for saying it's a Berlin town meeting. Let's keep it in Berlin. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're part of Tejanto. I understand that. But why have people traipse there when we have space here? 
Sure, there are uh, sound system issues, possibly lighting and so forth. Lighting. But it's it's the same situation, whether it's there or here. So let's keep it at home. Oh, I guess my assumption would have been that the football field would have already been wired for sound and lights. But nope, it does not have lights. They get a generator exactly. for all outdoor oh, okay. night activity. And also the only advantage I see at Tohonto is that it does have handicap um, metal ramping so people that would need to be seated can sit. It's it's not on uneven ground. It does have that handicapped availability, but there is no outdoor wiring for sound or lights. Okay, okay. thank you. There are, there are companies that do that. Yes, I know. We do it all, all the right. time for, for night nice sport. sport. I mean, okay. Okay. Yeah. Of, there was just something, you know, it's been done. I'm assuming it's been done there before. So it it's something I felt we needed to talk about. All yeah, right. I sure. see a hand up from Chief Clark. The lighting is an hand? issue. If you, if you pick the spot and pick how big an area you need, the lighting can be done. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lighting plant available uh, through the fire departments. I can think of five or six or seven right off the top of my head. So those can be asked for and, and, and retrieved that day, set up. All we have to do is start them and turn them on. They're also like generators, so you can run power to a sound system from one that's close to wherever the speakers are gonna be and or the, uh, however you set it up. So uh, we got some resources that we can give to that. And it's like, uh, that's uh, make your plans without having to worry about the uh, electrical power and the lighting. Thank you, okay. Chief Clark. Or or excuse or sound systems because we know now with Berlin uh, Cable has sound systems as do the uh, Berlin Memorial School and Tahanto. So there are sound systems to be had. Right. Okay. So um, in light of uh, Peg and Lisa's both of their um, their opinions, um, I, my opinion is that I would like to Think about, I mean, I think we do need another week or two to think about this. Um, I, I don't want to say that we're going to just do the 112th budget and be done with it. I think we should wait another week or so, see if we can get any more information on this and and um, talk about this again on the agenda next week or even Re the week. Relative, relative to that, a question, uh, kind of a homework question for, uh, Chief Galvin and Chief Clark is mobilization time that might be necessary for sound system and lighting if we're going to be borrowing it from other departments. No answer tonight, but it, at next week's meeting to have some kind of input relative to that could be helpful with our decision. Well, I just made a, a, a note on my pad here next to me in my office and <clears throat> Uh, I'll get that information and forward that to Margaret tomorrow. Terrific. Yes. Great. Yeah, through Margaret tomorrow. Okay, that's fine. Great. Thank you. And just a, a note on that too, um, that's all fine as long as it's not torrential downpour in June. Absolutely. What, what are the odds of that? Absolutely. And, uh, or it's 95 degrees. Well, per personally, I'm leaning toward inside, but I mean, because of your point, I mean, weather can just disrupt this entire thing topsy-turvy. So we need to think about that and how lucky we feel. Okay. Chris, is it, Chris, is it possible for next meeting to have a Neshoba Board of Health person who is actually skilled and knowledgeable in this to come to the meeting and answer any questions? Yes. Because otherwise, we're just going to go round and round and guess. Well, I, I, I think no, it that's... would be it would be beneficial if we had more information. If we're going to put this on the agenda, whether it be from Board of Health or I, I will queue up. I will queue up Neshoba for next meeting. Probably uh, Griffey, the director. I will consult with him if he's the best or if he thinks someone else would be better suited. But I'll right. make sure somebody from the show uh, is involved next week. Okay. And could you let Margaret and I know? Absolutely. Okay. No, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell either one of you. <laughs> we have, um, we have Just received, kidding, sorry. We have received information from a variety of sources. Uh, there, were, there were two documents that have come through via Neshoba. One of them I'd already gotten through the Moderators Association, which was something that was produced by the 
uh, health department in um, in uh, Berkshire County, in Western Massachusetts, and those thing that was the better document. Um, Neshoba has been relatively silent except for sending those forwarding those documents to us on that subject. Um, I believe we had that. To, I believe we had that in our folder for tonight. Am I right, Margaret? Yes, you have. You had both. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and then we have the the twenty seven page document from the Moderators Association includes basically all of these questions that people have raised. I pegged two or three of the ones that you raised that were specifically in that as things that need to be addressed. And so whenever, whatever decision we make in terms of inside, outside, and so forth, then the town clerk and the moderator still need to figure out how to run and order the meeting, given that situation. Yeah. And we will do that. Uh, we've talked about handing out voter cards, as we have at some previous town meetings. This one, we don't anticipate any paper ballots before we start. But in this case, it would be a good thing to have them because it would be a helpful way to admit people to the various rooms and make sure we know who's a voter and who isn't a voter. And it would also help us if we should have to have a paper ballot that expedites the paper ballot greatly. You go through it a lot faster with the, with the voter cards. And um, we haven't actually used them for a while now, but on a number of times in the past, we have used them and they've been a, a, a great help. So I think that it's entirely likely that whether we're inside or outside, we're likely to use the voter cards that people will get when they when they come in and register. Um, and needless to say, that list of people who, which Eloise has to keep and then has to put into the state computer as people's uh, activity as a voter, uh, that those. Uh, that list would be available for the social, for the question of uh, tracing. If we start having cases appear following the town meeting, we'd have that list of all the people that were there to be able to uh, indicate them as, as possible people that would be, would need to be traced and followed up on. Um, so, I mean, we've been thinking about some of these issues and sort of solve them, or at least for our own minds have solved them. But some of the others, depending on whether we're inside or outside and those things, we would have to act and, and, and figure it out further based on the specifics of the situation. And if the weather turns out bad that day, we're gonna to have to move it inside anyway, so. Right, or is there any possibility of a, um, a rain date if we had it planned for outside? Well, that's a possibility yep. too. Yep. Yep, okay. In fact, I think other, I, I can't remember which town, but at least one other town has told me they've done that. Okay, so why, why don't we put together the questions that we hope to find some answers to um, <laughs> yeah. next week or the following week. <laughs> uh, it's not as much finding the answers as figuring out what the answers will be for us. Yes, exactly. And exactly. So when's the drop dead date to make a decision? June 1st, June 8th? 15th? Well, I don't have a calendar in front of me except for June 15th is going to be the tentative end to phase one reopening. That's the three, that's when the three weeks are up from this particular reopening phase. So my hope is that by June 15th, the state will have some very clear guidance. And I don't know if Janet was on, it sounded like Janet was on the same call I was on today, but there are so many towns just just asking, begging for information, for yeah. guidance on town meeting. The state at some point has, has to, to offer up some guidance. If, if the 15th is that drop dead date, does it make sense for the select, select board to meet that date or the next night uh, to give a little time to digest that information, ask uh, pertinent questions. What is the what is Just the asking? What is the day of the week on the fifteenth? Monday. Monday. It's a Monday. Your first but I think fifteenth or Mondays. Yeah, I, I think the state would be would would have something in mind as far as whether they need to extend phase one okay. or they'll move to phase two. That's what I think by then. Yeah, and they usually do their governor does his update around noon or so. Um, 
and hopefully you would have uh, information ahead of time if it was um, you know advisories for town meeting and that kind of thing um, okay. why don't we why don't we just plan on the 15th we can always change it the 15th is a drop dead date to make a decision yes yes or no and uh, I mean we may end up discussing it next week too but you know, we, you, uh, you might want to have that as a standing agenda item. Uh, we'll, so, we can yeah. try to give any updates that are available at that time. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Okay. All right. I think we are in agreement that we're going to put this off, the decision tonight, um, and perhaps talk about it next week and perhaps the week after and <laughs> until the 15th. <laughs> um, so, um, Barry, is Barry still there? Yes, I am. Barry, um, I was going to move on to another agenda item, but I wondered if, if you, uh, unless you're planning to stay for the entire meeting, I was wondering if perhaps you could just give us an update on the town report and whether, you know, it's been sent to King Printing, I, I understand, and if you had any more information. The Excuse board, me, Chris. Anything I, I further for the Board of Health it? directly? I don't think so. Okay. You can stick around, though, Paul. I might. <laughs> Thank you. That's for yeah. fun. <laughs> so fill us in. Everything has gone without a hitch, I assume. No, the uh, annual town not. report. I mean, yeah, the annual town report. It's at King Printing. No. No. That's not correct. Okay. They, they do they have the, no the smaller file. Yeah, the file. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. A low resolution copy of the file was sent to them so that they could do the estimates for cost. Okay. There have been some edits and changes since then. In other words, the final copy is not yet in their hands. Okay. At this point, I would say that we do have the final copy and we're still waiting for the estimates so that we can make decisions on the color cover and uh, having the printer put the uh, labels on and so forth. Okay. So we've got a couple of issues that we've got to get settled when we have the estimates from the printer and that we have to make those decisions so that we can then Send, uh, send it and get it on its way. But we're ready to do that as soon as the, we have that, uh, the uh, estimates from the printer. When are the estimates the coming in? I, Barry, I thought they were coming in today. The estimates, I thought they were coming in today. I haven't seen them yet. I can look and see whether there's been anything from they're, Lori. They're not in yet. We didn't get them, did we? No. They're not no. in yet. Um, I had talked to Tom this morning. I thought we might get him today, but they're not in yet. So as soon as we have those and we make a couple of those decisions, then it'll it'll be at, at print and as soon as tomorrow or whatever. So. Okay. All right. Was there anything else that um, the board originally he originally asked for ten days to print it? Um, we'll see whether a couple of the things what I was just speaking of on cost would change the time you'll need. But I don't see any reason that we won't have it back uh, in ample time to get it out, uh, not like the last minute, but a few days before, some days before that. Okay. So when are we going to know on the estimate? What is, what is the date so that the board can be informed? I mean, we, we had voted last week for it to go, and here we are a week later and it's still not ready for print. We don't know about costs. We don't know about stickers. Uh, you know, if they can't do stickers, then what's the plan? Is everybody getting a box and a box uh, stickers to put it on and then put it back and then who's cleaning them, et cetera. I mean, again, my concern from the very beginning was delay, 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 and we, and here we are again. So when are we getting the quote back from the uh, printer and who's I responsible? I think we'll have it tomorrow, Peg. 
I would be surprised if we didn't have it tomorrow. I was surprised we didn't have it today because I talked to him this morning. So I think so, we'll have it tomorrow. And all right, honestly, then we're in very good shape. Who's going to be sending that quote out to the board? I can forward it when I get it or send it over to Margaret. Yeah, if you could send it to me and then I could pass it along to the board. Um, you how many pages it's a lot it's is, is there's there are far fewer it's, pages this year right it's fewer pages but more books are requested more books are requested but more books are requested than last year was what he said so it's 40 fewer pages but more books were requested okay he said that color versus non-color is not a big deal that's about 10 cents a book so that's not really the where you're gonna get the cost issue it's the number of books how many additional books were printed this year through the chair. Um, we've been, with the last two or three years, we've printed 12, 25. And after Eloise did the, uh, the count on the labels in order to get the price on that, we decided we probably should order 1,300. So it's up 75. Okay. Um, well, could you just keep us, keep us in the loop, Lisa and Barry? Okay. Um, let's see. And next thing on our agenda is the monthly department head visit from Police Chief Tom Galvin. Wow, you know, second time this month I've been in for a monthly report. So the, I, uh, I didn't, I don't have a written report for you. I figured I would wait and give that to you next week gaps when we have the numbers complete for the month. Um, but I'll give you a rundown of where we stand uh, today. Um, so we're just over 960 calls for the month. Um, still relatively low numbers in terms of criminal things and uh, traffic stops and citations. Although we're um, about three times the amount of traffic stops we were the previous month. And most of that has come over about the last week and a half. Um, we've really seen a need and I, I think everyone has seen it statewide um, that we, you know, things have improved and we need to start engaging the public in those ways um, because of uh, problems with people's driving habits. Um, you know, we've seen traffic crashes again. Um, you know, we had a pretty serious uh, rollover crash in front of uh, the mobile station uh, early in the month. Um, so, you know, because of these type of driving activities, we are starting to get out and start to do more, more traffic enforcement again. Um, you know, um, always a highlight every month is animal calls. We're up to 10. Um, the animal of choice this month is cows. We've actually had five animal calls uh, related to cows on the loose. Um, uh, most of those were attributed to one particular address. I think they have uh, things repaired there and we shouldn't see it again. Uh, you know, a horse, uh, second sighting uh, this year of a moose in town, a uh, chicken and some dog calls. Um, I've been working with Margaret um, on reopening, uh, you know, gathering reopening supplies for the town offices um, with gloves, masks, uh, sanitizer and everything uh, that's going to be needed when we finally are able to uh, start welcoming people back into the town office building and the public safety building. Um, and we've made a few changes um, in the last week um, with some technology on our radios, um, kind of related to um, a further topic in the meeting. Um, but now we have ability, all the radios, or all the uh, cell phones that are in our police vehicles, um, uh, we have a uh, enterprise level app um, from a company called Zello. Um, they provide it to public safety for free. Um, we purchased some uh, radio gateways that hook into our old base station radios in the, the former dispatch center. And uh, we actually can utilize our cell phones as uh, radios now. Um, so we've equipped a few of the fire vehicles. Um, you know, we did this to, to, to temporarily, it's, it's really not a mission critical um, system that we would want to use long term, um, but we did this. Uh, to uh, assist the process and move forward with uh, occupancy at the uh, the Rockwell Apartments, um, it's really worked well. Um, you know, even for myself, I've noticed uh, you know, I don't always have to have that bulky portable when I'm uh, when I'm doing some things that uh, you know don't require it, and I, I still have complete radio contact with uh, with the officers that are on duty. Um, what's nice is anywhere that I have cellular coverage or Wi-Fi, um, whether I'm across the country, um, you know, here sitting on my deck. Um, my, you know, my radio works uh, as if I were in my car or had a portable with me. So it's, uh, it's been a nice little addition and it was something we were able to do at a relatively low cost, uh, you know, because kind of bridge the gap as the first bridge uh, with things that we're doing with the Rockwell. Um, just some other things uh, I talked to you about the CSX work that's going to be done in town. 
Um, it seems like we're pushed back a little bit. Um, I went out this morning to try and find where they were, um, did locate them. They just entered Lancaster um, and things weren't going uh, smoothly, according to the people I saw, the crews that I talked to and the police officers that were working the details there. Um, so I think it's probably going to be pushed back to next week uh, before they're here in town. Um, you know, when we talked last about this, uh, we talked about the road closures and the time frame of the road closures. Looking at the work that's been done in Sterling and the time frames, and I think we're going to have significant times that the roads are closed. So it's going to be working closely with CXX and the crews to make sure that not all the roads are closed at once. And they've already, you know, assured me that that won't happen, that we would be able to work with detours. Um, Mass DOT has been great. They supplied us with sign boards already on 495 and just off of 495. Um, I'll work with them after I get confirmation to change the dates and, and update things. Um, we have our town um, sign board that's out and uh, Dave Smith is working with uh, some of our neighboring uh, DPWs to try and secure a couple more that we'll put down near uh, Route 70 and Route 62 to try and minimize the truck traffic. Uh, the less trucks that we actually have to turn around that think they're going to get through town while this construction is going on, it's going to be better um, because they're not going to be able to follow the detours. The, the roadways that they would have to travel on really can't handle significant truck traffic. Um, and. Uh, is you've seen some of these uh, birthday parades and beep uh, parades that have been going on. Um, we have one planned for four o'clock on Friday um, for all the, the graduating class at Tonto. So all of the uh, graduating seniors will be lining up in their cars at uh, the Memorial School. And we're gonna escort them up and around um, the center of town and then into Boylston. Um, I think it's a nice way we're gonna allow parents to spread out along the route to be outside to see their kids. Um, where they're going to have uh, a very non-traditional graduation this coming weekend. So uh, it's a way to kind of kind of get them some exposure, recognize their uh, their years of, uh, of hard work to, to achieve their graduation. And uh, so if you're around and you, you, know, you want to be in the center of town on Friday, it would be nice to uh, to wish well to all of our graduate graduating seniors from Tonto. Is it is there a route that the um, that they will so, be on? Yep, so we're going to come out of um, come out of South Street, um, right up into the center, and then um, Woodward to Carter, back down um, Central, and right out 62 into uh, into Boylston. Okay, so it's a kind of a short one, but yeah, we'll do a night. We we figured if we do a loop around um, around the church and around the center of town, that would give uh, some family members and parents an opportunity and area to spread out, and then have. Um, have the church, have the highway garage, have five corners, other areas where people could be staged along the route and be able to maintain social distance while they did it. Right. And it's on social media? Um, it's being advertised. We're not advertising it. It's being done through Tonto. It's really to go to the parents and the families for the, for the kids. Um, it's not something they've asked us to, to publicize townwide. I figured I would mention it here. Um, and I think it's or, being shared through friends, friends and family. Last time um, something like this happened, I know that some people were alarmed because they were sort of feeling that we're in an emergency situation. So hearing a lot of sirens and that sort of stuff, um, especially for people who had conditions that made them anxious, um, it was kind of an issue. So maybe if we can publicize it a little bit just from that perspective of, hey, this is going to be going on on Friday. So don't worry if you hear things going on. Yeah, I, we can do that. I, I don't think we're going to run into that issue anymore. That was the very first time that it happened. We've done many since then, and we've he heard no complaints, no no issues in terms of like the birthday beep type parades and things. Um, so I think people have kind of, as we've talked about with other things, the new normal, um, they've come to accept this and appreciate this. Um, but we can put something out, uh, you know, maybe Thursday or, or tomorrow just to, just to alert some people that may have concerns. Um, I, I think some of that was really some that we went into like every neighborhood. Um, so yeah. people had, you know, this, this will be down the main roads and, and through town. So it shouldn't be as much of a, uh, a scare to people. At least I would hope it wouldn't be. Okay. Excuse me. What time is that at again, chief on Friday? At four o'clock. Four o'clock. Okay. Thank you. And are there any other questions for the chief Peg? Um, so with both chiefs here and Mrs. Natowitz, uh, we had talked many, many uh, meetings ago about house signs and or house numbers. And Margaret, I know that you said that CMRPC could 
uh, potentially help us with this, but it would need to go through fire and police because the house numbers would be considered a safety issue. Um, or, obviously we could do, or we could do it through, or we could do it through MVP. Once we have a plan, we might be able to apply for something. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, so I, I realize that other far more important things have come up than house numbers, but um, was just wondering if that's still on anybody's radar and potential plans to do something with it, so we don't lose sight since it came up at last coffee talk. I think I would defer to Chief Clark in the beginning on that. It, it, that's really something that's all I, I know. At least here in the discussions has fallen under some of the inspectional stuff that the fire does. Um, you know, we've put some information out in the past. Um, you know, I have, I'll tell you, I haven't been in any, we haven't really had many discussions since that email chain kind of went through when we got some, some recommendations from CMRPC on different ways or, or grant funding we could potentially use to fund it. Um, but I, I think you're right. It's not something we want to want to lose sight of because it can definitely be a hassle in an emergency. Um, it's, I think it's much easier as, as inspections are done with newer homes, um, but it's trying to get those older, you know, ones in existing up to uh, up to what we like to see with the um, numbers that are easy to locate. All right, so we'll just I'll kind of keep it like right there as an ongoing action item once life kind of calms down a little bit to bring back up um, so that we don't lose sight of it. All right, thanks, Chief. Okay. So, I I had one question for, for you, Tom. Yep. You never got a call about the bear in my neighborhood? I didn't hear about the bear. Yeah. No. I, ah, so, so I know I've, I've had some inklings from people and I've seen some, you know, bird feeder damage, but uh, no one has called to report the bear, um, which is a good thing. I think, you know, people understand, you know, and, and obviously we did get a call about the moose. I think it was more people wanted to know so they didn't hit it. Um, but, you know, we have a lot of wildlife, you know, we, you know, there's yeah. the, uh, the, the numbers are increasing. We know that the, you know, the number of coyotes, the herd, the deer, moose, they're all thriving. So it, it's hard. There's a combination of development. And there's, I see a lot of things posted about development and we're pushing animals out of their territory, but there's also just more animals. There's less hunting. There's a lot less things that are done. Um, you know, so, well, you know, think. we're going to see a lot more people in Berlin tend to be used to it. Um, I think it's more alarming for someone to see five cows in their front yard than a bear now. <laughs> um, and that's what we saw this month. <laughs> well, this one was hanging from a tree in my daughter's backyard trying to reach the bird feeder, you know. Uh, did you get any good pictures? Uh, I think the neighbor behind her took a video. It's probably okay. out there, but it's not very clear. Okay. And then it ran down the street towards my house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we weren't, I forget what town it was last week. It was at Tewksbury, one of those towns where they had the monkey sighting. So we oh. haven't had one of those yet, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> that's a good one. Sure, it wasn't Bigfoot. Uh, it was Daryl. <laughs> oh, well, um, since uh, I don't know if you want to remain outside, Tom, it's getting a little dark. I wondered if you'd like us to take your... Um, Donation for the radio system upgrades out of order. That's fine. Yeah, if you want to discuss that now, that'd be great. Okay. You or Margaret want to fill us in or fill the general public in on what's going on? Chief, go right ahead. <laughs> um, so we, we talked about this. I gave a little in introduction a few weeks ago, um, and I left some of the details out. Um, so as the, um, the Rockwell apartments have been developed by NRP, um, one of the requirements of the project is radio communications. There was a change in the building code about a year ago, and um, there is a, there's a requirement for public safety radio communications to meet a certain standard. Uh, so when they did the testing on the clubhouse building first, it failed, um, and they installed a piece of equipment to, to boost our radio signals. Um, as building three was to come online, they were in a similar situation. Um, and we started to have some discussions because this, this becomes a significant expense for them um, with a very small footprint benefit for the community. It only benefits those buildings in which they put equipment in. Um, so as we talked, um, we started to look big picture. And um, we had been looking at a funding source for a public safety radio system here through our regional dispatch center. And over the last few years, as I explained at that meeting a few weeks ago, um, up dry and we don't see that as a viable alternative anytime soon. 
um, which leaves us to the, to the system we have, which is functioning, um, but it's antiquated and it, it's in dire need of upgrade. I've been working with a, a radio vendor for a little while discussing the options as Bolton is, is going through an upgrade now. Um, so then what was presented to us from NRP was, uh, you know, potentially if we could come up with some short-term alternatives to meet the standards um, for their buildings, um, that they looked at it as a greater good for them and for us if, if they could make a financial donation which would allow us to improve our overall radio system. Um, and so we discussed the options with them, uh, discussed it with the radio vendor, and um, you know, we, we've come up with $350,000, which will not pay for our entire system. Um, it per, you know, will pay for a significant portion of the system and the upgrades that would have to go in the area to really benefit them as well. Um, but um, you know, we were gonna look at some alternatives to close that gap. Um, it could, I'm wait, waiting, I was hoping actually this week to have an est a firm estimate on the overall system um, we're working off the Bolton estimate to give us our, our numbers. Um, but uh, I was hoping to have that from our radio vendor. It's not quite ready yet. Um, so as we move forward after this, uh, we would be looking at closing the gap in funding. And there's, there's some options. There's the, um, the community compact IT grant that was actually utilized by two communities last year for public safety radio systems. And we have had success in the past. We actually received a community compact IT grant, which purchased our um, inspectors, um, inspectional services software for our permitting. Um, so we would work through that process to hopefully receive some funding there. Um, and then there's a couple of other options as we continue to move forward, um, should that fail. Or we would go back, you know, worst case, if we, we weren't able to obtain all of that funding, we would go back to our radio vendor. Um, we would look at what short-term fixes we could put on our existing quit equipment to then make the investment and, and install part of, an, you know, part of the new radio system down in that area um, where the apartments are built to, uh, to utilize the, um, the gift funding to, to bolster our system in that area. So th there's a lot of moving parts as it continues to move forward, um, but this gift was a, a great alternative um, to a considerable outlay from the town for funding in the future and a considerable outlay for NRP group um, for their current project. Um, as I mentioned in my report, um, we've also already put a cellular component, which is a, is a short-term fix in place. Um, once the donation is received, we would buy a portable piece of equipment um, that would give us a little, buy us a little bit more time, I guess to say, um, to give us a piece of equipment that we could use down there on a portable basis. Um, but again, not, not the permanent uh, fix that we'd be looking for. Uh, but uh, a way to get us through until we're able to um, build out an entire system. So it, it really is a great opportunity, um, and it's, it's a, both a win for NRP and, and absolutely a win for the town, especially as we look at you know, financial situations being cloudy as we move forward, um, to, to have that $350,000 seed money um, to move forward with a radio system is going, to, uh, is going to benefit us quite a bit um, in the very short term as we move uh, through towards a project. Um, so I guess unless there's any questions um, or anything else I can answer. Is there, is there a need to have this in place um, before occupancy permits are? No, so we needed to have something that met the standards. Um, and we worked with Richard Hanks with the building inspector um, and um, Fire Marshal Litchwell to, to make sure that we were meeting the standards. So that's why we were able, uh, Richard was able to actually to issue temporary occupancy on 11 apartments, I believe last week, um, because th there were some people that were staying in the hotel. Um, you know, so we kind of looked at this as a, as a, you know, we got this up and running, I think, I believe it was Thursday that the temporary occupancy was issued um, to, to get some people, or Friday, to get some people into those apartments um, now, um, you know, really to get some of our new residents into their, their homes. Um, you know, so it was kind of, it was a win-win. It was a win-win for, for us, a win for our new residents. Okay. I just didn't need to know whether it needed to be in place, um, before then, but I, yeah. No, we, yeah. So, I mean, we, we could have, and, and Richard has a broad authority as the building inspector to issue temporary occupancy. Um, you know, uh, but we looked at it as that we wanted to make sure for our public safety needs, um, that we had something in place prior to occupancy and, and we were able to do that last week. Okay. Um, are there any other questions for Tom on this? No? Well, I want to thank uh, NRP for uh, this donation, and um, I believe we need to take a vote to accept the donation of $350,000 for radio system upgrades.
So moved. And seconded. Okay, let's take a vote. Uh, Keefe, aye. Wysocki, aye. Stone, aye. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, and I know Mr. Trump was listening, and thank, uh, thank NRP as well. Um, I think this is an important step forward for both of us. Yes, it is. Thanks, John. Thank you. And uh, I guess we'll go back up to the town administrator report. Okay. Um, let's see. COVID-19, we talked a little bit about the fact that phase one of the state's reopening plan is in place now. Um, there are certain businesses and facilities, um, including outdoor facilities, that are now allowed to operate under um, certain conditions. Uh, folks can get details on the uh, phased reopening plan at mass.gov slash info dash details slash reopening dash Massachusetts. Um, so all the, um, the intended phased reopening uh, information uh, is on that website. Um, the Council on Aging Director preliminary interviews were held on um, Thursday evening, May 21st. Um, the preliminary interview panel consisted of Bob Blair, um, co-chair of Council on Aging, Peggy Sardell, who is a Council on Aging um, senior tax workoff participant and vital to Council on Aging's operations, Sue Terrian of the Personnel Committee, and June Pullen, our town accountant. They voted unanimously to recommend that two candidates move forward as finalists for select board interviews on uh, June 1st. So I, I will ask um, that their interviews be scheduled with the board for June 1st. I think I've received um, final interview questions from one board member so far. Um, and I just ask that all board members uh, send me your final interview questions so I can compile them. On the HR compensation classification study and personnel policy and procedure updates, um, I'm going to be speaking with a consultant next week. She's going to be giving me some updates um, on that, and I will report those updates to the board at your next meeting following. Um, you're going to talk tonight about the F FY21 expenditure plan. Everyone's somewhat familiar with this now. This is the plan that would have to be put in place for the month of July should town meeting be uh, delayed by a month. Um, for future months, expenditure plans would also have to be put in, uh, in place if there was a continuance of the delay of town meeting um, you know, further into FY21. 21. So just as a reminder, departments are going to be required to submit their July essential expenditure requests by June 1st. Uh, June and I will then have an opportunity to review them for accuracy um, and to make sure that they are indeed essential uh, spending requests. Um, then those, the, those, the plan, the recommended plan will be presented to the board for approval on June 15th, the same night that you have your drop dead date for your town meeting, your town meeting decision, mm -hmm. and then right after the board's vote on that, um, June will be would be submitting the expenditure plan to DLS, uh, Divisional Local Services, for approval. The finance committee voted last week. Seems like a long time ago. I think they voted last week um, to, or maybe the week before, to pay off. The ladder truck debt service, as you know, that was one of the changes in the revised uh, budget and revised revenues once COVID-19 hit. Uh, the initial plan was to pay off the ladder truck. Then we pulled back on that knowing that we might or understanding that we might need some available cash reserves um, in the form of public safety mitigation funds. But because those funds are so restricted for use of public safety, uh, the Finance Committee voted to put that money back in the revenues and pay off the ladder truck debt. And tonight, when you vote this tonight, I am, I am in full support of the Finance Committee's vote on this. This will eliminate that non-excluded debt service on the budget. Um, the June 4th um, pre-town meeting and FY21 budget forum, uh, we're working on that. I sent out a draft uh, agenda last week um, to the parties that will be asked uh, to provide statements. Um, I have asked Barry as the town moderator to do the welcome and introductions to the forum. 
then the select board will have a chance to make comments about town meeting and the budget process from your perspective. And we'll move on to the finance committee, capital planning committee. And um, later that evening, the administrative finance team will do a small presentation, just talking about best practices um, in, with the town's finances. Uh, so it's an opportunity to get everyone in the know about what's coming up at town meeting and with regard to the budget. On the library septic, the Board of Health hearing is scheduled for June 16th. Thank you very much, Mary. Mary has posted or is in the process of posting um, and sending notices to abutters um, with the legal notice. Um, Evan Carloni has been behind uh, formulating the, uh, the wording of the legal notice, and so he's being kept in the loop. Uh, we have gotten um, a couple of quotes on 20 to 21 winter season heating oil and the price per gallon is 90 cents less a gallon this, this winter coming up, which is going to be an estimated savings of $18,000 in that budget line. So that's significant. So we will be locking in the total cost for the 20,000 gallons will be about $28,000. So I'll, I'll give the board another update at your next meeting um, with regard to the execution of that, um, that service agreement contract. The next item um, is moving on. Uh, a reminder that town election will be happening on Monday, June 29th from 12 noon to 4 p.m. In, in the basement of 23 Linden Street. Um, the town clerk is encouraging voters to do early or absentee uh, voting by mail. We are, as Chief mentioned, we're in the process of preparing um, phase two reopening reentry plans. This is going to involve having plans in place, instructions, forms for municipal uh, departments and employees, and of course, the supplies and equipment uh, that go with that. So we have ordered the supplies that Chief mentioned earlier, plus plexiglass for counters. So we're trying to put everything in place and have kind of a unified approach to the reopening, which we think is going to hap happen sometime in phase two. So middle of middle to late June, but we have to keep tabs on what the state, what the state says. Um, the Laura property, the board's going to be talking tonight about a coffee talk agenda for your Thursday, June 11th coffee talk and uh, John Annie, the Conservation Commission Chair, has agreed uh, to discuss CONCOM's interest in the property at your coffee talk on Thursday, June 11th from 7.05 to 7.20 p.m. So um, a request is in to please add him to your agenda for that time slot. On the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Plan, um, we actually do have some dates now for MVP stakeholder workshops. Um, the first two hour, they're, they're all gonna be virtual. The first one is gonna be on June 18th from 3.15 to 5.30 p.m. The second workshop, again virtual, will be on June 24th from 3.30 uh, 3 to 5.30. And the last stakeholder workshop will be on June 25th from 3.30 to 5.30. After that, CMRPC is gonna prepare a report and that report is going to be going to the community for um, public comment on July 13th with a final Q&A session on the report on July 23rd. Um, the final report has to be submitted by July 30th. So this timeline put us right, um, right, under, the, um, right under the deadline. And those are the big updates I have for today, nothing else pressing at the moment. Nothing else. <laughs> oh, actually, you know, one, one, one thing, the Tolman property, I wanted to give you an update. Um, I talked with the engineer um, who is contracted through CMRPC and their Brownfields grant. Talked with him this morning. Um, he is, he believes that we are going to have to move on to phase two at that property. Phase two means um, it, it usually consists of more in-depth environmental site analysis, sampling of materials. Um, there are clearly, um, it, there's poor housekeeping there, but in addition, um, he believes that there are containers and tanks in various stages of deterioration that are going to have to be addressed. One of the things that we proactively have to do in the absence of the owner uh, being present is that we are going to have to have a conversation with DEP. DEP is well aware of what's been happening at that property over the years because they've been involved 
in the um, in the notifications that the town has given them. Um, in addition, EPA is trying to also get involved and get on the property. So again, going back to where we started, my hope is that this continues to be a joint effort with the town, DEP and EPA all doing their part to try to clean up the property. So that's where we're at at the moment. And um, I think that we may be eligible for some additional grant funding through CMRPC for the phase two. Great. Good. All right. Uh, are there any questions for Margaret? Nope, are you awake? <laughs> no, I'm all good. All right. Okay, um, then we're gonna move on to discuss the Selectman Coffee Talk and the agenda, which I believe was the town meeting, the uh, election and the Laura property and the library and uh, is that good? Is that, did I hit them all? Sounds like you, sounds like you got them all. Okay. So meeting election, Laura property, and what was the other one? Library. Library oh. septic, of course, yes. And we have uh, Evan Carloni, who's going to be also at the coffee tour. I coffee. think he'll be there, yes. Okay. I asked him, I asked him if he could come at about uh, roughly 7.30. Okay. Um, so it says on the agenda, it's the Zoom is at 6 p.m. Is it, it's really at seven, correct? I think Mary set up Zoom ahead of time to prepare, but I, it's, it's definitely a 7 p.m. Okay. That's right? Coffee talks at seven. Okay. I can have the room be ready for whatever, but it's, it's advertised it as seven. Okay, 7 p.m., so the agenda, okay. So right, right. No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure I had it on my calendar for the right time. All right, is there anything else to be added with uh, about Coffee Talk? Okie doke. Um, then we're gonna move on to the updates on the FY21 budget. I only have two. I only have two because the board has done its due diligence on this budget. The first one is I will ask, um, I, my recommendation is to approve the um, use of the additional public safety mitigation funding to get that ladder truck debt service paid off this year um, by applying the additional $115,689 uh, from public safety mitigation funds your remaining balance after town meeting, if all other articles are voted, uh, your remaining balance in public safety mitigation would be $28,225.14, which I would hope would serve as a base for a future public safety stabilization fund. So seed funding in public safety stabilization. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing I have is an update um, that the Berlin Boylston Regional School District School Committee voted last week uh, to revise um, some budget numbers and um, they are, uh, they have resulted in some reductions to Berlin's assessments. Um, the reduction for the Berlin Mo uh, Memorial School operating assessment um, is $33,271, uh, bringing the revised assessment to $3,304,741. The Berlin Memorial Capital Assessment is being reduced by $25,000, so re resulting in a revised um, request of $95,000, and that's only for that project that takes care of the, uh, the ceiling above the gym to access mechanical systems. And then the final, um, the final revision is to um, the Tejanto assessment. That would be reduced, or that is being reduced by $22,160. So that brings the revised assessment to 2623776 for a total reduction in Berlin assessments of $80,431. We have not um, we have not applied that to um, uh, further revenue projection reductions yet, 
or to reflect um, on the budget side. So on the um, Burlington Memorial Capital Assessment, for example, uh, we're planning on using old special articles. Now there's gonna be some old special article balances that are gonna remain out there through town meetings. So we're not, gonna, we're not gonna touch those. So at your next meeting, I'll give you updates on the revisions that the administrative finance team recommends to um, revenue projections um, based on those reductions. So. And we haven't heard from ACIBET, correct? We have not heard anything from ACIBET yet, no. Okay. No. All right. And just so the, bar, the board knows that your next meeting, we will be beyond the, um, the um, real estate and personal property tax deadline. So we will know real time what our tax collections were uh, to see if, um, if we have any revenue shortfall issues. We'll also be able to reassess by then um, what, may, what may revenues at the state level look like and we can make adjustments on those accordingly. Okay, would you like a vote this evening on those changes? Those updates? Please. All right. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve the changes. Seconded. Okay. Uh, we'll take a vote. Um, Keith, aye. Wysocki, aye. Stone, aye. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we have an appointment of under new business appointment of Bob McTagg to the Historical Commission through May of 23. Motion to approve. Okay. Seconded. Okay, we'll take a vote. Keefe, aye. Boisaki, aye. Stone, aye. Okay, motion passes. Congratulations, Bob McTagg. Um, and we have, um, a statement of financial interest disclosure, self-disclosure uh, by Jeffrey Green, who has just um, been appointed to the Economic Development Committee. Um, we need to vote um, acceptance or approval of this. So I will ask that the board actually authorize the chair to sign the uh, disclosure, the financial interest disclosure form um he, he they've got a you've got a new appointee on that economic development committee who is doing his due diligence that's for sure um but locally we only require a shorter financial um a financial interest uh form uh, that's provided by the ethics commission and he was very quick on it this morning he filled it out and now um the board just needs to uh, the board and planning board uh both need to have signatures on this form the one thing that I did add um, under comments on this form that it is recommended that Mr. Green recuse himself during EDC discussions and or actions on particular matters that conflict with his professional affiliation with and responsibilities to Clinton Savings Bank. So that's, that's obvious. He would just need to recuse himself for those matters. Okay. okay. Would someone like to make a motion to approve of the statement of financial interest? A motion to approve of the statement and to authorize the chair to sign the statement. Second it on both. Okay. Um, we'll take a vote. Um, Keith, aye. Boisaki, aye. Stone, aye. All right. All right. We'll put an electronic signature on this one. Okay. Uh, we have the C3 Industries Virtual Community Outreach Meeting. One is the authorization to proceed and two is the form of notice for the retail marijuana shop at 64 Banner Road. Okay. The, form, um, the form of notice, um, I think I've kept the board in the loop uh, on all of this. Um, C3 provided the sample notice. I had a couple of comments on that and requested a couple of revisions. Uh, first of all, the notice itself wouldn't have been posted in time uh, for, to meet the, um, the required timeline for public notice. So we've asked them to move um, their proposed uh, community uh, outreach meeting date to June 16th rather than June 9th. I also, um, I also wanted the applicant to make clear on the notice the Zoom access information. Previously, they had only included the website where they could get the Zoom access information. I asked him to include 
the Zoom access information in addition to the website. So when people see the notice, they would know exactly how to log in um, to Zoom. Um, and the uh, toll-free number is also going to be provided. Um, regarding, so the notice, the notice as far as, as far as my review goes, the notice is in proper form. And as far as the moving forward um, with uh, allowing them uh, to conduct the community outreach meeting, um, I, they are going to be scheduling their technology testing next week. Um, I have notified them that we'll have three town representatives present for the testing. So Brittany, Mary and Leanne um, are all supposed to be attending the testing. So I'm gonna be giving all of them an outline of the things that we're looking for in the testing, including um, the public's ability to, you know, the interaction capabilities, uh, counts of attendees, so the numbers of people that are actually attending, uh, how call-in attendees will be able to ask questions and get responses versus people who are logging in on Zoom. Um, so they're supposed to be providing instructions on the chat function and the raise hand function um, at the beginning of the meeting. I've also asked them to add a couple of additional ADA uh, uh, functions. So the baseline was closed, was to provide closed captioning. So I wanna see closed captioning um, in the technology. I wanna see that shown for the entire length of the meeting in a font size that's readable because you could do different different font sizes. I want it to be, I want it to be good and readable for people to see. I also want them to do to generate an automatic transcript so that would um, through the cloud recording function, you can enable an audio transcript to be generated from the meeting. I want that to uh, be generated as well. And then I also want all keyboard accessibility, including global, global shortcuts to be enabled so that people using whatever kind of system, a Mac or a, a PC, um, would be able to use the keyboard shortcuts um, uh, for um, accessibility reasons. So I want that enabled for the meeting and the chat function. Um, and they have agreed to do that. So as far as the requirements, um, it appears from their plan and from the emails that we've sent back and forth and their affirmation that they're going to meet these requirements that um, uh, that they are willing to comply with the town's um, the town's requirements. So uh, my recommendation would be to allow this to proceed. And by the way, I will be the um, I will be the moderator with some assistance from C3 personnel who will be going through the questions and feeding them to me. I will be assuring that every single question um, is presented and answered during the meeting. Okay, questions, comments for um, from Lisa or Peg? Hang on. Okay, Lisa, no? No, this has been very thoroughly litigated. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. And seconded. Okay, we'll take a vote. Um, Keith, aye. Waisaki, aye. Stone, aye. Uh, motion passes. Thank you. We will do everything in our power to make sure that there is that there is participation, public participation in this in this uh, community outreach meeting. Yep. Um. I think I've covered everything. So we're on to board questions and comments. Peg? I just have the one. Um, just a gentle reminder about the artwork for the COA van. I know Bob put it out on Berlin Neighbors Connect. I reposted it to uh, Berlin Residents United. So anyone who's watching our playback the deadline is June 3rd. Um, I reached out to Bob. He didn't respond if he had any back already. So hopefully the town will get their uh, artistic thinking cap on and get some really funky designs in for the bus. And how do you submit them? 
Uh, there is a package. I believe he put something up online. There are some physical packages uh, that are at, I think, the general store, both liquor stores in town. Uh, but pretty much the person just has to design what the artwork will look on the side of the bus, the back of the bus, and then the other side of the bus. Uh, their name should not be on the artwork. It should be on a separate piece of paper so that whomever is doing the voting you know, won't be tilted by, oh, you know, this one was done by uh, Chris. Isn't this one nice? Okay, I'm going to vote for this one. Um, I don't think the committee has been set yet to vote, but uh, hoping that there'll be lots of town participation um, from folks. Can we um, also get that? I know that it was on the non-town social media, mm -hmm. but can we make sure that Bob's packet gets on the town social media? Yeah, I can talk to him. Happy to do so. Okay. Mary could probably even grab that off of. Uh, yeah. Mary, if you go on to uh, Berlin Residents United, I cross posted it. Bob had originally just put it out under him, and then he shushed it out to Berlin Neighbors Connect, and that's where I grabbed it from. So um, if you look in one of those three spots, you'll grab all the information. Plus, he has uh, pictures of the van out there as well for people to get an idea of um, how big, how wide, wrap, wrap, and go around. Uh, there was a question out there, will people be compensated for their artwork submission? And the answer is no. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lisa, do you have anything? Uh, just, um, I had a suggestion that um, since I've been pushing people like crazy to do early voting, that maybe we should put it on the sign, um, the yellow blinking sign, um, in between all the other things that apparently have to go on the other on the yellow blinking sign. But right. when we've got an opportunity, if we could put that in between the other things, um, yeah. that might be a good thing. Okay, sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to ask that if you have not filled out your TA evaluation forms to do so and um, email them to me. Oh, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> That's who I, <laughs> the one I'm talking yep. to. No. Got to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we do not have an executive ses session scheduled, um, so I would take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And seconded. Okay. Keith, aye. Uh, did you know that Tom Galvin has his, okay, it's gone. <laughs> Waisaki, aye. <laughs> Stone, aye. All right. Motion passes. Thank you very much.